In a prior video, I showed you how you can add a button to an Airtable base that triggers a Pipedream workflow. I'm gonna take you a step further. I'm gonna show you how you can actually suspend a workflow and add an approval or rejection button to Airtable to either allow the workflow to continue or to reject it outright. So say you have a live feed of data and you wanna make sure that a person approves the automation before it continues. Well, we can do this easily with a workflow and a tiny, tiny little bit of JavaScript. I'll walk you through it. It's not that complicated. As always, we're gonna start with a brand new empty workflow on Pipedream. In this case, we're gonna add an HTTP webhook trigger, but it really just depends on your situation. Maybe you have data coming directly from Stripe, or maybe you're using a Discord bot or a Slack bot to trigger a workflow. It really just depends on your use case but it's really flexible for us to use the HTTP webhook because we can design a payload or a test event. And I'll show you what that is. So we need to choose a tr HTTP trigger. We'll click save and continue. And now we have a unique URL that will trigger this workflow when an HTTP request is sent to it or a webhook. Now we can click the generate test event button to design a sample test event that we can develop this workflow from. Below, I'm gonna pretend that we are Netflix and we want to make sure that we block IP addresses or block customer accounts that are sharing passwords. I know it's not that super popular, but this maybe this is how they're gonna do it. They're gonna use Pipedream in the back end with Airtable, who knows? So let's pretend that someone signed in with their email address on netflix.com. And we'll just say, you know, Pierce at Pipedream. I'm signing in and my, and my cousin is also using this, this account. I don't know. So we'll go through and we've created this sample HTTP request and you can see the body was added to the bottom. Now we need to add to our Airtable base. So you can see below after I added a new step, there's a new Air, there's an Airtable section. We'll click this. And for this example, I'm gonna show you how to do it in JavaScript. So choose the use any Airtable API in Node.js. This will allow us to choose our base and our table without using any code. So I'm gonna use this contacts just as an example. And I'm gonna choose the first table in it. All right, before we dive into any more code, let's look at the table so we understand how we can design this whole thing. So we'll head over to the Airtable base, and you can see it just has a simple email and a status field, and that's about it. So we wanna add two buttons that will trigger the workflow to cancel or continue. So I'm gonna add a URL field here, and I'm just gonna call it approve, approval URL. And we're gonna add another URL field that will be the cancel or reject URL. Cancel URL is better. We're not gonna, we're not gonna ban this account or um, suspend the account if we cancel this action. And then finally, we'll add some buttons that are easy to interact with that opens up a URL. And for the formula, all we're doing is opening up the approval URL for one of these. So this will be the approval URL formula and the field name will be approve. So this will approve access. The style should be green, right? Approve the account. We create the field, and this will open the URL from the approval URL field. If we want to reject it, we can add a rejection button. So we can add another button here and Add it right here, and this will reject. So we'll make it red. And the URL formula will be just type in cancel for the autocomplete, and then you can click the cancel URL button there. This will cancel the user's access. I don't know, cancel the user's account. So we'll create this field. And now we have two buttons that will actually open a URL when we click on them. So this will be um, cancel. Now we have our table kind of basically laid out. We have the account email, we have some notes about the account, the status, it probably has a status of to do to start because they've not been judged yet by the person that's processing this, this form. There's an approval URL and a cancel URL, which now we need to populate using Pipedream. And I'll show you how. So we'll head back to our Pipedream workflow and you could see down here, we've populated our contacts and said which table, and you'll see this bit of JavaScript that Pipedream added automatically and we chose this step. 
we're actually going to change this portion right here. So you can see that it's selecting fields by the default, but we don't want to select, we want to create a new record. So we're going to head back to the Airtable API documentation and just select the base that you're interacting with. And you could actually scroll down on the side and we're going to create a record under here. So this is, this is the table that we're playing with. And here's the documentation for creating a record. And on the right hand side, you'll see a curl example, but we're using JavaScript. So we'll just click the JavaScript example and look at that. We've got all this scaffolding that shows us how to create a record right here. So we can just take this. You could see how the example in the pipe dream workflow step kind of rhymes. So you can see the very two top lines are importing the Airtable NPM package. And then beneath it, you'll see it's starting a brand new client using your API key that Pipedream manages for you when you connected your account. And it chooses the base based off of the base you selected up here. So these two lines we can leave. That's, that's great. We're, we have a, we have authenticated Airtable base JavaScript client. Now we just need to actually remove the scaffolding that we're not going to use and instead use the scaffolding that will create a brand new record. So I'm going to copy and paste this into our workflow. And now we should have a nice, easy to use scaffolding to start from. And I could, I could see here, it opens up a new array and it passes two separate objects, one, two separate objects. We don't want to make multiple records in this particular case. We're going to do one event at a time. And I'm just going to delete the second one, just as an example. And instead of having a solid email address, I'm actually going to use the email address from our trigger. So I'm deleting that and I'm going to go to our results and select the path to our test event, the test email. We'll copy this, we'll bring it down to Airtable, and then we will just paste it in here. So now we're referencing the trigger, HTTP triggers body and the email field inside of it. And now we will be, we'll be creating a new record with these two fields. What about the approval and the rejection URL? Well, I will show you how to use that in just a moment. So if we head back to the pipe dream documentation, I'll link to this specific page in the description below, but you can see this special function called the dollar dot flow dot suspend. And what it does, it actually stops your workflow until the cancel URL or resume URL are hit. So we can copy and paste this and then place it inside of our code, right? Like this. So now it's using the dollar sign, which contains utilities like exiting your flow or delaying your flow. In this case, we are suspending the flow and it's returning a resume URL and a cancel URL. Now we can just use these URLs and place them like so into our Airtable create record call. I think we called them approval URL and the cancel URL. Let me just double check our Airtable base and make sure those names line up. Approval URL, cancel URL, and head back to our Pipedream workflow, approval URL, cancel URL. Now you may be wondering, hey, wait a second, flow.suspend is up here. How come the steps, how come the code below it is going to run? Well, that's because flow.suspend doesn't apply until the end of the step. This gives you a chance to send yourself an email if you wanted to use uh, $.email instead, $.send.email. So if you wanted to send yourself an email with these two URLs instead, you could do it that way, or you can create an Airtable record, or you can do anything within a pipe dream code step because the suspend doesn't apply till the very end of the, of the step. So we're just going to send it to this particular Airtable workflow and let's test this thing out and see if it works. I'm sorry, I, mis I misunderstood the documentation. So we want to actually assume the, the table here. The base is the base, <laughs> and we need to make sure we actually choose the table. So the scaffolding was correct. This argument is the table, not the base, sorry. So we'll test this again, and hopefully this time we've, we've specified which table under that base this record should go to. And let's see here. This step was trying to run code. That's okay. 
And if we return to our Airtable base, we can see the brand new record added with the approval URL and the cancel URL. And you can see a special unique URL that actually does the work of canceling or approving. We can actually minimize these because we'll never, we'll never need to use them. We can use these instead. So now that the flow is suspended, we can say after this, some kind of action to ban the user via an API request or cancel their subscription with Stripe, whatever you choose. But we'll, we'll just add here, we'll add a console.log or uh, we'll return cancel account just as a placeholder. I don't know, something like that. We'll test this. It should just return an export in the step that just says cancel account. We'll pretend that we're doing some kind of action here and then we'll deploy this whole thing. Awesome. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna use um, Insomnia to design an HTTP request to actually trigger this workflow. So I paste it in our new deployed workflow and the body expects some kind of JSON, right? So I add some JSON and we'll do the same thing. Email, we'll call it live at pipedream.com. We'll send this and we should get a response back from Pipedream, perfect. And we can see in the event inspector on the left-hand side that the workflow is paused because it hit our suspend. And we'll go over to our Airtable base and sure enough, we have a live at pipedream.com instance. We can cancel this account or we can approve the account. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve it, which should resume the workflow. We'll head back to the workflow and we can see it changed from, from a suspended state to a finished state. And underneath we could see the account has been canceled. All right, I probably used the wrong terminology. I should, probably, should have switched the approval URL and the rejection URL because if you click approve, it actually cancels the account. But you get the idea. Now we can actually reject the workflow or suspend the workflow. Let's go ahead and test the opposite case where we say uh, reject me at pipedream.com. We'll send it again and you can see the workflow stops. It waits for some kind of intervention and we'll go back to Airtable and we can click cancel on the far right side and we can see the feedback from Pipedream says cancel requested and we go back to our Pipedream workflow. We can see this exclamation point, the, the node step is actually never was hit the workflow is canceled at the very top here. There is no return value for node or any steps underneath this Airtable action because we suspended and then canceled the execution. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. As always, have a great day.